My pal Ice T surviving the game. Hey, coming up on Monster Vision, we got a couple more hunting movies Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2, yeah. where the hunted are little yellow intestine creatures who make a couple of newlyweds crazy and then hightail it off to a carnival where they can attack some more people right directly in the hiney. That's where they attack them. That's the ghoulies' favorite form of torture. That's, that's a big selling point for these flicks, actually. And you think I'm kidding. It is. See Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs next on TNT. How many pairs of black pantyhose do you think they use up during a performance of Riverdance? I want to be the guy who sells black pantyhose to Riverdance. Even when they wear white dresses, they wear black pantyhose. And then the way they can pound the floor with those deadly Buster Browns, that makes you never want to date an Irish woman, you know what I mean? And speaking of demonic midgets and Nazi regalia, we've got Ghoulies coming up in a minute. I'm Joe Bob Briggs, host of the only show that would dare to show a double feature of Ghoulies and the even more incomprehensible Ghoulies 2. But as I was saying, is it my imagination or is Riverdance on TV 24 hours a day now, like Muzak? And what does that mean, anyway, the title? There's no river. Where's the river? The word river makes it sound like synchronized swimming, or at least you're going to have a little gliding around like swans or something. But instead, you got these red-headed robot Catholic schoolgirl cloggers who can send African drum signals with their heels. Then the frizzy-haired midget floats out. You know that guy, the star of the show? The only real male presence in the show is a three-foot-six goat dancer. You know what I mean? He dances on tippy-toe, like a goat. And then, am I hallucinating, or does a really bad black gospel choir come out in the middle of the show and sing some song about let my people roam free while standing in front of a silhouette of the Brooklyn Bridge? Does that really happen in Riverdance, or did I just have some kind of weird PBS nightmare? How many black people live in Ireland? All of them are in this show, right? How did Riverdance become the most beloved video of cultural yuppies everywhere? Because it's not like we hadn't seen this dancing before. You know where you can see this dancing every week? On the live broadcast of the Grand Ole Opry on the Nashville Network. They've had Irish cloggers on there for, what, 1,700 years? And how many hours can you watch clogging, anyhow? After the first 30 minutes of watching these paralyzed at the waist ice queens kicking the floor like lesbian soccer players, you tend to go, these Irish girls just don't get out much, do they? I mean, your mind wanders. You're watching it going, uh, 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 wonder what she'd look like if they did that naked. Uh, 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 they probably wear sport bras, right? Because they were... I know there's supposed to be some kind of story to Riverdance, but to figure it out, you have to listen to those high-pitched Tweety Bird singers and actually figure out what the words are. Are all Irish songs written for triple high C sopranos accompanied by accordion music? No wonder there's so many drunks over there. I just don't get the whole deal. Riverdance. Pow, 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 river dance. I am woman. Bring out the twittering midget. <laughs> okay, more accordion music. How about a zither solo? <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? It's so enriching. Somebody write in and explain this to me, okay? And speaking of midgets, we're going to watch Ghoulies right now, and it's about this newly married couple who inherit a haunted mansion where, uh-oh, Jonathan's daddy once ripped out his mama's heart and let her get eaten up by rat monsters. But now Jonathan starts reading the magic books in the basement and dressing up like a Ku Klux Klan member and holding the spear up and saying weird Latin phrases backwards until his eyes turn green and his robes start flying in the wind and these little yellow intestine creatures show up and then two midgets offer to serve him forever. I don't want to give any more of it away, so I won't say anything more. I'll give you those drive-in totals at the next break. Roll the movie. And also, on Riverdance, why do they do extreme close-ups? Because it just looks like this. That's an extreme close-up on, on Riverdance. Why do they do that? Hi, I'm Rusty, the Monster Vision Mail Girl. It's not an easy job, especially when Joe Bob says something really annoying, and I have to deliver 20 times as many letters from Monster Vision viewers. But don't worry. I work out five times a week to make sure I can handle anything you want to send my way. Come visit me at Monster Vision website, tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision, and I'll show you what I mean. See Rusty deliver the Monster Vision fan mail to Joe Bob Briggs every Saturday night on TNT. 
to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Ghoulies on TNT. Hey, I know. Let's do a ritual. <laughs> That's called a transition in a Charles Band movie. Ghoulies was, believe it or not, one of the most successful movies ever made by Empire Pictures, the company that Charles Band ran in the 80s. Even though everybody knew it was a cheap ripoff of Gremlins, but the advertising posters had a picture of a ghoulie emerging from a toilet, which the critics said was a most appropriate image for where the movie came from and where it belonged. Anyway, I just want to point out two things and then we'll move on. The guy in the kitchen who's trying to impress Donna, and he says, Hi, my name is Dick, but you can call me Dick. <laughs> that actor's name is Keith Joe Dick. And the actress who plays the very beautiful and desirable Donna that Dick is hitting on, that she has that conversation about going out with Toad Boy, remember her? That actress is Mariska Hargitay, daughter of Mickey Hargitay and Jane Mansfield. Now, I don't know if anybody even remembers Mickey Hargitay anymore, famous pro bodybuilder who got lots more famous when he married Jane. So, anyway, Mariska has those Jane Mansfield jeans going for her, which is a much better thing than having those Mickey Hargitay jeans going for her. But anyway, that's her, and this is Ghoulies, and let's move it along. And, oh, with the drive-in totals, I promised you those. We'll do those now. We have nine dead bodies, two breasts. We won't be seeing those, of course. Tongue-talking, whining, wailing, face-eating, rat-attack, spear-chucking, exploding heart, laser eye special effects, kung fu, midget fu, tongue fu, and devil fu. Two and a half stars. Check it out, and we're going to be here all night long, waxing poetic and waning poetic. Roll it. This whole thing was filmed in the Waddles Mansion in West Hollywood, which has been deserted ever since... Ever since Mickey Hargitay was Mr. Universe, so... Anybody ever see old newsreel footage of Mickey? He was kind of the Jean-Claude Van Damme of his day. You couldn't quite take him seriously, but you couldn't avoid him either. He, he was one of Mae West's boy toys toward the end of her life, and uh, Jane stole him from uh, Mae West. Ugh, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> You know, there just aren't that many things that are scary anymore, are there? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, one of them is our Monster Vision website, which is where we put the viewer mail we're too chicken to actually put on TV. Did you people have mothers that write this stuff? Good grief. You can also check out the weekly Playmate, provided your taste in centerfolds runs to scaly mutants and saber-tooth vixens. Just head on over to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision, and when you get there, do me a favor, okay? Keep it in the ballpark area of borderline psychotic. Don't go into that other zone, all right? We got kids logging on. Some of them are already mutating. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Ghoulies on TNT. So if Jonathan and Rebecca are still college students, they must be especially stupid college students because they both look about 35 years old and they still haven't graduated. Ghoulies is kind of a throwback to the 50s, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Including the performance of Lisa Pelican as the long-suffering girlfriend. Or is she a wife? Girlfriend or wife? I can't tell. Anyhow, he says, I've decided not to go to school anymore. I'm just going to clean the house. And she says, fine, dear, whatever's best for you. And he says, hey, let's do a satanic ritual. <laughs> well, all right, honey, if you think so. It reminds me of that Nancy Reagan role in Donovan's brain. You know, I'm going to be keeping this brain alive in the back room, sweetheart. That's good. How about a nice stew? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but the acting is kind of 50-ish as well. So, uh, did you see the way Jonathan suddenly turned zombie on us? Like that? He, he's summoned down into the basement. You know he's turned zombie because he goes... <laughs> straight out of a Roger Corman film from the 50s, which is appropriate because the interiors of this movie were filmed at Roger Corman's studio, which is a converted lumberyard in Venice, California. Ooh. Okay, enough B-movie trivia. Let's get some ghoulies going here. Roll it. See, pretty soon, I know, they're going to start talking about their relationship. What are the seven most dreaded words in the human language, guys? We need to talk about our relationship, right? I usually have a great comeback for that. Uh, we do? Another comeback I have is, huh? 
<laughs> now, one thing you should never say is, can it wait till the game's over? Don't say that. You can get permanently injured saying that. I have this mark. Well, I'm not going to go into it. Just don't say that. <laughs> when you enter the Monster Vision caption contest, don't just string a bunch of cuss words together and tell us that's funny. Only Jack Nicholson can do that. If you really want that Monster Vision t-shirt, then impress me with your sincerity. Try something witty, or at least amusing. Don't make us snicker. Make us roar with unabashed delight. Go to tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision and make the six-headed jury laugh and turn over a new leaf in your life, okay? Play the monster caption contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. Back to monster vision host Joe Bob Briggs and ghoulies on TNT. So the girlfriend is gone, and that leaves Jonathan alone in the house with his pentagrams and his talismans and his cute little furry mucus-covered reptilian pets. And we're going to leave him there for a minute while we read a little viewer mail in the segment we call Joe Bob's Advice to the Hopeless. And helping us out right. is Miss Gunderson's Whole Wheat Tortilla 1994, right. Rusty, right. the TNT mail girl. Gunderson's Whole Wheat Tortillas. They had a motto I liked. What was that motto? We like them healthy. That's it. <laughs> And I couldn't agree more. Hmm. Unfortunately, it was false advertising. What? What do you mean? They were using food coloring to make the tortillas brown. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. They were misrepresenting themselves. It was a flour tortilla, in other words, disguised as a whole wheat tortilla. Exactly. And you were representing them. Well, fortunately, your own tortillas survived that traumatic experience. So. <laughs> I hope I didn't hear that. Well, who do you say the letter is from? Because... It's from Darren McBee in Los Angeles, California. They were supposed to be whole wheat. Yes, I understand. <laughs> All right. Dear Joe Bob Briggs, a lot of stuff in this letter. Dear Joe Bob Briggs, I'm writing to you after watching you and Roddy Piper give your sparkling review of Immortal Combat. My name is Darren McBee, and I was the, let's see, how'd you put it, ex-Chippendale steroid-pumping silicone butt-implanted B12-injecting actor that remained nameless. Oh, boy, okay. <laughs> There's a few issues I'd like to address if you'd indulge me. Regarding the steroid comment, how about taking a look at Mr. Piper's bod? during his They Live performance, and then his somewhat deflated look on Immortal Combat. Funny you didn't ask Hot Rod about anabolic steroid usage. <laughs> you took pot shots at two of us that were unable to defend ourselves. In regards to the silicone butt implant comment, sorry, these buns are all USDA prime choice. <laughs> However, you were correct on two accounts. Let's look at his buns. We have his buns. He's got pictures of himself. This is Darren, okay? This is Darren, and uh, uh, he says, get a look, good look at him? Yeah. <laughs> he says, for one, I did use uh, uh, B12 injections to keep the killer mosquitoes at bay. Oh. Okay. okay. And two, I did have a short stint as a Chippendales dancer. Now, about the nameless actor bit, chew on this, Joe Bob. Yeah. Some of my credits include a starring role on American Gladiators. Yeah. Guest starring roles on shows like Married with Children, Sybil, In Living Color, and many others. See resume. And he has his resume here. <laughs> 6, 4, 2, 20, Buns of Steel. As, as uh, far as films, try roles on the last two Batman films and a lead villain role in this past number one box office film, Mortal Kombat Annihilation on for size. See enclosed picture of the horny guy in Mortal Kombat. Here he is as the horny guy in Mortal Kombat. Point being this, Joe Bob, I think Roddy Piper is a terrific guy. However, however, before you bag on another actor, why don't you make sure that his resume and acting accomplishments aren't more substantial than your guest stars? Oh, by the way, have you seen the National Sprite commercial where the karate guy gets cracked in the head by the Sprite bottle? If not, ask around. I bet a bunch of your co-workers have with much love and fond affection. Let's not go that far, Darren. <laughs> Peace, Darren McBee. Wow. Do you realize what's happened here, Rusty? What? Like a jerk, I poked fun on national TV at the karate guy who gets cracked in the head by the Sprite bottle. Oh, I didn't know it was that guy. 
I didn't know it was that guy. Oh, my God, Darren, you've got to come on the show when we have our All Chippendales Actors Reunion show because I feel so ashamed of myself. I feel terrible about this. Uh, Who is he again? He's the Chippendale dancer in Immortal Combat with the Buns of Steel. You know, the guy who used to be on American Gladiators and he did that great guest star turn on Sybil. It's Darren McBee. It's the Darren McBee. He wrote us a letter. Oh, okay. I'll never get another movie role the rest of my life because you realize what I did to myself? No. I made fun of his B12 injections and all that time, those buns of steel are legitimate. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Ghoulies on TNT. Ghoulies really takes off once the Nazi midgets appear. <laughs> the late Tamara Detro. People talk about Drew Barrymore being an E.T. Tamara Detro was E.T. She was the person inside the guy turning him into a star. But does Spielberg give her any credit? She had to go get low budget work before we ever got to see her face. She plays Greedigut. And her partner is the great midget actor Peter Risch as Grizzle. They're great, but the real stars of the movies are the Ghoulies, puppets controlled with cables. You can't really tell them apart, but there are a lot of them, and they're nasty and slimy, as Ghoulies should be. So, back to the movie. Ghoulies was directed by Luca Bercovici, who starred in the movie Parasite 3D. Wow. Fact is in my head, I spit it out. I can't <laughs> help it. I'm shallow. But I'm teeming with shallowness, you know? All right, if you're going to write in to us here at Monster Vision and share your gripes, your opinions, whatever, and you're a woman under 140 pounds, single, and you don't have any strong opinions about any of the most common vices that men have, then I want you to use my home address because it's quicker. So just send those letters. What? I cleared this. I can do this. I'm telling you, we had a three-hour meeting about this. I've... I've it's not an attempt to get Nookie on TV. <laughs> well, you don't have to use that word. Look, all right, look, I'm going to have to get back to you later. But meanwhile, just keep writing to us at 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, and emailing us at monstervision at turner.com. I like Superfly. What, what, what are you saying about Superfly? What, why do you use that word? What's the implication there? Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Ghoulies on TNT. I love the part where the midgets start clubbing the ghoulies into submission and arguing over who the true master is. <laughs> Stuff like that almost makes up for the rest of the cheesy effects, like when Jonathan's eyes turn green so we'll know he's zoning out on us again. How many movies did they rip off to make this thing? Gremlins, obviously. Poltergeist, the evil clown puppet. Remember that? Friday the 13th with the dead horny teenagers. And then the zombie jumping out of the grave, the slime-spewing ghoul who looks like Professor Irwin Corey with face herpes. That could be any number of Night of the Living Dead movies. And there's a ripoff of uh, The Raven coming up right now as we witness the conclusion of Ghoulies. Back to the movie. Well, I just got a note from my producer to stop calling the midgets midgets. <laughs> so what do we call them? Dwarves? Little people, little people. <laughs> Vertically challenged, half pints. <laughs> Probably the best one is dwarves, because that's what that's that's what they use when you go to the dwarf bowling tournaments. You know, <laughs> you don't ever hear midget bowling. Nobody goes to that. You hurl dwarves, never midgets. Hence the politically correct term. Of course, there's midget volleyball, but that's much more rare because it's hard to find people strong enough to serve the midgets. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Joe Bob Briggs on Joe Bob's Last Call, coming up next on TNT. And now, Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. 
so all the writhing zombie house guests live happily ever after. And Charles Band's monster puppets went into a warehouse somewhere where they were pulled out two years later for the movie Troll. Not the exact same puppets, but they're pretty dang close. They're in the same slime family. You'll see what I'm talking about next time we show Troll on Monster Vision. I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and I want to remind you that next week we have the Brian De Palma classic that you can't show too many times. I'm talking, of course, about Carrie. Right. And we'll be following that with the movie David Lynch made after Twin Peaks was on TV called Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me, which is actually about what happened before Twin Peaks was on TV, so it's kind of confusing, isn't it? Now, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the bathroom... <laughs> That was the actual tagline on the poster for Ghoulies 2, with another shot of the Ghoulies coming up out of the toilet. And I don't, I don't think, it, did I tell you the tagline for the first Ghoulies? I don't think I mentioned that. The first tagline was, they'll get you in the end. <laughs> Ghoulie coming up out of the... Nothing like scatological humor to get the crowds pouring into the theater. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ghoulies 2 didn't get a theatrical release. It went straight to video, where it spawned two more sequels, actually. But this time, the little pus monsters show up at a carnival, blending in with the other freaks, killing slutty carnies and geek high school students until everybody starts drawing pentagrams in the dirt and quoting Shakespeare, trying to stop them from throwing people out of the Ferris wheel. And once again, there is a midget involved, but you know what? Let's just do those drive-in totals and get it started. We have eight dead bodies, no breasts, five dead ghoulies, razor blade slicing, knife to the leg, pus to the face, ghoulie to the face, severed arm, foot biting, ghoulie eating, death by toxic waste, death by pendulum, exploding ghoulie, ghoulie foo, and of course, toilet foo. So, Two stars. Check it out, and I'll be right here with you all night long. Did you notice how I used that word? Scatological? <laughs> yeah. You know what that means? No. It means per pertaining to the end times. That's what I mean. End of the world. Armageddon. All that stuff. Oh, okay. I know it's dirty jokes, but how do you think they got the words end times from that? Hence, scatological. You know, my philosophy of viewer mail, who needs the heartache? Get rid of it. Unfortunately, TNT insists that you continue to pummel me with your incredibly diverse and somewhat frightening opinions. <laughs> there are two ways to do this. You can write to us at Monster Vision, care of TNT Programming, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Or you can use the ways of the truly disturbed. You can email us at monstervision at turner.com. I thank you, Ted Turner thanks you, and Bill Gates thanks you. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. The evil Mr. Harden wants to replace Satan's Den with female mud wrestling. And we're supposed to root for the haunted house? First rule of screenwriting, always make your main character sympathetic. How am I supposed to sympathize with the guys standing in the way of a mud wrestling tent? That's a no-brainer. Anyhow, I told you Ghoulies was made by Empire Pictures, headed by Charles Band. After the relative success of the first movie, he wanted to make Ghoulies too, but he couldn't find any directors who would touch the movie without changing the script. So he hired a guy he knew would do it without changing the script, his daddy, Albert Band, who directed the original Young Guns in 1956. He directed a creepy movie called I Bury the Living, a fairly famous cult movie. And then he went to Italy and he did a bunch of spaghetti westerns under the name Alfredo Antonioni. See, the Americans change their names to Italian names when they work in Italy. The Italians all have these American names. Anyway, and then he came back to the U.S. and he started making low-budget B-movies for his son Charles. And I should also mention that Albert Band, the father, normally composes all the music for his son's pictures. And I noticed on this one that the music is credited to Fuzby Morse. Now, since nobody's ever heard of Fuzby Morse, I suspect that Albert didn't want the credits to read produced by, directed by, music by, edited by, because once you get more than seven or eight credits by one guy on the front end of a movie, looks like you're cheap. <laughs> 
Of course, the bands are cheap, but uh, anyway, back to the flick. Did you notice how the big meeting that they had was at the 10 in 1? You know what a 10 in 1 is? It means 10 acts under one tent. A 10 in 1 was always the backbone of the carnival, the freak show. And, ten, and, and it, at least five of those acts would then have some further money-making gimmick so that once you were inside the tent, they had these other ways to get your quarters, you know, another quarter to look behind this curtain, another quarter to buy some uh, pictures of the tattooed lady. But anyway, the 10 in 1 was usually the largest employer on the midway, so it was the natural meeting place for all the carnies. Now, wasn't that enlightening? Do I know my freaks or do I know my freaks? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Rusty, the Monster Vision Mail Girl. It's not an easy job, especially when Joe Bob says something really annoying, and I have to deliver 20 times as many letters from Monster Vision viewers. But don't worry, I work out five times a week to make sure I can handle anything you want to send my way. Come visit me at Monster Vision website, tnt.turner.com, forward slash Monster Vision, and I'll show you what I mean. See Rusty deliver the Monster Vision fan mail to Joe Bob Briggs every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. Boy, those people don't get out much, do they? <laughs> I like how the crowd runs into the haunted house like it's a Pink Floyd concert or something. <laughs> Isn't that the concert where people got trampled to death? Pink Floyd? Or was it that Julio Iglesias concert in Puerto Vallarta where that happened? <laughs> you know the blonde girl who goes into the haunted house looking for Muffy the Kitten? You know why she has to die? Because she's a slut. Yeah. All sluts must die, the fourth rule of low-budget horror. Anyhow, that's Royal Dano as the drunkard Uncle Ned there. Royal Dano died about five years ago, but man, did he work a lot. 83 films, countless TV shows. I won't bore you with all the titles of his films except one, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. Remember that one, Clowns with a K? Great flick. One of Royal Dano's first movies was The Red Badge of Courage in 1951, which Albert Band co-wrote the screenplay, obviously. The novel, of course, was written by... The novel, Red Badge of Courage, was written by Margaret Mitchell. When in doubt about a Civil War novel, say, just say Margaret Mitchell. Okay, nobody knows the difference. And I, and I, and I, oh, I remember what concert it was where the people got killed. Neil Diamond in London. You know, three old ladies and a guy selling hot tea were trampled to death in 1972. Tragic accident. I know it was Stephen Crane. I know Stephen Crane wrote the Red Badge of Courage. Ichabod Crane's brother, right? <laughs> you know, there just aren't that many things that are scary anymore, are there? Fortunately, one of them is our Monster Vision website, which is where we put the viewer mail we're too chicken to actually put on TV. Did you people have mothers that write this stuff? Good grief. You can also check out the weekly Playmate, provided your taste in centerfolds runs to scaly mutants and saber-tooth vixens. Just head on over to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision, and when you get there, do me a favor, okay? Keep it in the ballpark area of borderline psychotic don't go into that other zone, all right? We got kids logging on. Some of them are already mutating. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. That guy Merle who got mummified by the ghoulies, what was his crime class? Why did he have to die? Uh, he was stupid. That is correct. He was stupid. The fifth law of low-budget horror, the stupid must suffer. So anyway, that actor is William Butler, and he's already quite a veteran of horror sequels. He was in Friday the 13th, Part 7, Night of the Living Dead, the remake in the 90s, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and he starred in Watchers 4. Now... Either he is a huge horror fan or he needs a new agent. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm going to hurt that guy who keeps calling his radio his tunes. Yeah. Where are those little murderous demons when you need them? Okay, back to Ghoulies 2. Roll it. 
And I think I figured out what those ghoulies are supposed to be, too, because let's see, we, there's the cat ghoulie, the dog ghoulie, the flying fish ghoulie, the alligator ghoulie, and the Danny DeVito ghoulie. So what you got, basically, is a PBS children's special on pet care with mutations. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. Okay, that was the obligatory touching moment, wasn't it? Nicole is afraid of heights ever since her brother missed the net. So Larry comforts her. And why do I think that later on she'll have to go up high again? Mm. Also, if that midget does any more Shakespeare, I'm bailing on this one. Because you know what? This is the same midget who quotes Shakespeare in Troll, isn't it? This guy, the midget, was trying to make a whole career out of... He wanted to be remembered as, you know, that dwarf who does Hamlet. Get that guy for me. I need that guy for my movie. But that raspy voice he's got, is that a midget thing? Because sometimes he sounds normal, but most of the time he sounds just like Hervé Villachez did, but without the French accent. Except he doesn't look like Hervé Villachez. He looks like the guy from Hall & Oates. I don't know which guy from... Who was the dark guy with the mustache in Hall & Oates? The shorter one. Yeah. Yeah, that was Oates, right? Yeah, right. So anyway, this guy's name is Phil Fondacaro. And he plays... He's been in a lot of movies. He was Abraham Lincoln in... Uh, I'm only kidding. He played... Uh, he plays short guys, usually. He played Cousin It in Adam's Family Reunion, the one with Daryl Hannah as Morticia. That one must have got by me somehow. Uh, he was a troll in Troll. Uh, he played a bartender in Steel Justice. Now, that's got to be tough for a midget to pull off. Bartender, right? Uh, he was an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. But wait a minute, weren't, weren't the Ewoks big? The Ewoks are enormous. Wasn't Chewbacca an, an Ewok? I got to brush up on my Star Wars particulars for this summer. No, they weren't? Ewoks were little. The Wookiees were big. Okay. Well, maybe I can get TNT to schedule those, those flicks for us so I don't have to go out and rent them. Yeah. Yeah, like we're going to buy those movies. <laughs> or like they ever listen to me. You know, keep dreaming, Joe Bob. <laughs> Just don't even go down that road. Okay, let's go. They did let me show the original Godzilla around the time the new Godzilla came out last year. Yeah. One the critics hated and the public hated. But my friend's seven-year-old kid is obsessed with that movie threw a temper tantrum when they took him to see the Nutcracker on Ice because he wanted to see Godzilla on Ice, right? <laughs> he probably accounts for half of the box office receipts on that flick because, let's see, half of $100. It, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> when you enter the Monster Vision caption contest, don't just string a bunch of cuss words together and tell us that's funny. Only Jack Nicholson can do that. If you really want that Monster Vision t-shirt, then impress me with your sincerity. Try something witty, or at least amusing. Don't make us snicker. Make us roar with unabashed delight. Go to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision and make the six-headed jury laugh and turn over a new leaf in your life, okay? Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. Slime City. The Ghoulies are heading for the Midway and they're ready to party. Are you sensing a slight lack of enthusiasm on my part? Slime that day player. They're sliming them left and right. Yes, Sir Rooney. All right, my favorite part is coming up here, so I'm going to move it right along. Remember the famous bar scene in Gremlins? Well, this is Empire Pictures' answer to that famous scene. Roll it. The Ghoulies are on the loose in Rome. That's where this flick was shot. Why? I don't know, but it was shot in Rome. They had to pay more for cameras, but they got fresh mozzarella at cost in Rome. Cheese for the cheesy. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call and Ghoulies 2 on TNT. And there you have it. The giant rubber suit Gilman Ghoulie gets blown up with a Molotov cocktail, and Larry and Nicole go off to find other cheapo horror sequels to star in. Kind of a mild ending there. I want to remind you, though, that we're showing Carrie again next week. Last time we showed Carrie, 
I had an actual witch co-host it with me, and I think we offended him somehow because yeah, things oh, hadn't yeah. worked quite right around here ever since then, you know. But this time we're showing it straight up, and then we'll have the prequel to Twin Peaks about the last seven days of Laura Palmer, Twin Peaks, Firewalk with me, which doesn't make a lick of sense. I can't even understand that movie, but we're showing it. And uh, that's it for me, Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that some people are alive only because it's illegal to kill them. Did you guys hear the one about the blonde who gets a brand new sports car for her 16th birthday? Well, she goes out driving, and when she's out driving, she cuts off a tractor trailer. And so the driver motions her to pull off to the side of the road, and when she pulls over, the truck pulls up behind her, and the driver gets out. He takes a piece of chalk out of his pocket, and he draws a circle around the blonde. He tells her not to step out of the circle. Then he pulls out a pocket knife, he goes over to her car, and he cuts up her leather seats. But when he turns around, the blonde is, is uh, stifling a giggle. So he says, you think that's funny? Then watch what I do now. So he takes out his knife again, he slashes all four of her tires. Turns around, and now she's laughing. So the driver gets really mad, and he goes into his truck, and he pulls out a bat, and he smashes all her windows and smashes the car all up. The blonde starts laughing so hard she can barely stand up. Well, now the truck driver gets really, really mad, so he gets a gas can out of his truck, and he torches her car. Well, now the blonde is on the ground. She's rolling around. She's laughing her head off. So the truck driver looks at her, and he says, What's so funny? And the blonde says, When you weren't looking, I stepped outside the circle four times. Oh, <laughs> Joe Bob Riggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Blonde walks into a store, right? She sees this shiny object and she asks the clerk, uh, what is that? The clerk says, it's a thermos. And the blonde says, what does the thermos do? And the clerk says, it keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. So the blonde buys a thermos. Next day, she brings her thermos to work and her boss, who's also a blonde, says, what's that shiny object? And so the first blonde says, it's a thermos. And the boss says, what does it do? And the blonde says, it keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. And the boss says, what do you have in there? And the blonde says, two cups of coffee and a popsicle. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh.